in the workshop, making a steam whistle and valve assembly. I recently completed a steam plant construction for a customer using a Stuart Models HB6 boiler, and the video series is called Assembling a High Quality Model Steam Plant. The purpose of this video is to show how I made a whistle valve and whistle assembly that can be retrofitted to the HB6 boiler. And it all starts with collecting the components. I went to see my friends at Blackgates Engineering and I bought a 3 8 steam whistle and a whistle valve. This type of whistle valve is really for a model steam locomotive where it screws into the turret on the top of the boiler and the whistle is remotely mounted. I'm going to modify this arrangement so that the whistle can mount directly to the valve, which in turn can screw into the turret on top of the HB6 boiler after the blanking plug on the side of it has been removed. The first job that I need to do is make an adapter to allow me to mount the whistle directly onto the valve. The simple adapter starts off as a piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter brass bar fitted in the chuck. I face the end of it and now I'm using a centre drill followed by a twist drill which is 7 seconds of an inch, tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. Because of the length of the thread on the whistle, I'm making this adapter 3 quarters of an inch long so that it fits over the original threads on the whistle without me having to shorten them. This clip shows the threading operation. I engage the back gear of the lathe to slow down the rotational speed of the chuck, and here as you can see, the threading operation is well underway. Here's a useful tip. When threading holes like this, it's a very good idea to drill the hole longer than you need it, so that the tap doesn't bottom out at the end of the hole and snap off. Once the hole is threaded, removing the tap is very simple. All you do is reverse the direction of the lathe with the switch on the front of the lathe. The type of tailstock chucks that I use on my lathes are the hand-operated type. You don't need a chuck key, but when running in reverse, the chuck needs a little bit of pressure applied to hold the tap in place. I've disengaged the back gear and the chuck is going fast, so I can use a couple of grades of sandpaper. This, for instance, is a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. So once I get the part nice and shiny, I just use some scotch Bright to finish it off. Health and safety warning, try not to get your fingers caught in the chuck when doing this. The quarter by 40 thread on this whistle doesn't go right to the end, there's a plain part, so I have to modify the fitting. Using a quarter of an inch diameter drill, I just drill down the end of it for a short distance that corresponds to the plain part of the shaft on the whistle. And then I use some Loctite 542 on the threads, for this application, the whistle needs to be permanently fixed to this adapter, so the 542 will help with that. And to make doubly sure that it's a firm fit, first of all, I screw the whistle into the adapter. Then using the tailstock chuck, I clamp the other end to hold that firmly in position, and I slightly rotate the chuck, and this makes sure that the whistle is very tightly screwed into the adapter. And now it looks like this. Complete, you would think, but no, there's more to do yet. The thread on the brass part at the end of this adapter is threaded quarter by 40, quarter by 40 to go into the whistle valve, and quarter by 40 to fit in a steam turret on a model steam locomotive. But unfortunately, this has to screw into a Stuart Models HB6 boiler, and the threads on that are not quarter by 40, they are quarter by 32. So I need to make a thread adapter, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm using a piece of brass hexagon and I'm turning one end of this down to exactly a quarter of an inch. And then, as always, I use a centre drill to drill down the centre, followed by a twist drill. And if you wonder why do I use a centre drill, I would suggest that if you have a lathe, try drilling a hole in the end of a piece of brass without using a centre drill, and watch your drill wander all over the place. A centre drill is just a very short, stubby drill that drills holes in the end of pieces of metal without wandering about. In this clip I'm using a tailstock die holder to cut the thread, and as you can see by my large thumb being out of focus in the foreground of the picture, I'm turning this chuck by hand, I'm not doing it under power. By the time I've engaged and disengaged the back gear, it's quicker doing it this way really, because it's only a very short length of thread. This by the way is the quarter 40 thread end of the adapter. After speeding up the video for the very last part of that operation, I try a commercially produced quarter by 40 nut on the thread that I've just cut and it's okay. I didn't really need to do this, but just so I can show you the valve in detail, I checked that it screwed into the valve and it did. 
Before I part off the length of this hexagon bar that I need for the job, I'm cleaning it up on a piece of wetted dry sandpaper. The wetted dry sandpaper also removes the burr left by the cutting tool because the tool is quite blunt. And now it looks much better. And then it's back into the lathe to part off the piece of brass hexagon that I need for the next part of the job. I'm doing all this work by the way in the small boxford and even the parting tool works well in this lathe, it's very good. I didn't drill the other end of this piece of brass deep enough with the twist drill, but it was so very very close as soon as I used the centre drill it broke through into the hole that was already there, so I don't need to use a twist drill on this. The next job is to thread this end a quarter by 32 threads per inch. I have about four tailstock die holders of different ages, so I try and put the most popular dies permanently in these and I just reach for the correct one. It just saves quite a lot of time changing dies and setting them to cut correctly. I just pick up the selected die holder with the die in that I need and just start cutting the thread. Anything that saves time is very good. Because time is something that we're all running out of all too quickly. And I don't mean to depress you by that statement, but it is a fact. I won't expire just yet, so I'll just get on with the video. Time now to reassemble the valve with the new adapter. I'm using Loctite 542 to make sure my new adapter doesn't leak. I'm not using 542 on the whistle adapter, because the whistle needs to be screwed to the valve after the valve is fitted. You will notice that I've turned off some of the hexagon at the end that goes into the boiler, because the part of the HP6 boiler's turret where this will fit is recessed. I'm supplying some shim washers with this valve, so all the customer has to do when he receives the valve is use the correct combination of these shim washers to make sure that the whistle ends up at the top. A trip to the post office is imminent. That's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.